Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for our Wednesday encouragement. I hope you're having a great week. And I hope you've been taking advantage of our Lent devotions. Of course, this is today's devotion, but they're available Monday through Saturday on our website, our Facebook page, and our app to help you prepare your heart as we look ahead to celebrating Jesus' resurrection at Easter. Well, back in early December, Officer Richard Houston of the Mesquite, Texas Police Department answered a domestic disturbance call where a man who had been confronted by his wife over his infidelity was causing a, a problem. As Officer Houston tried to calm him down, the man pulled a gun, shot Houston twice in the chest, and then turned the gun on himself. The shooter survived, but the officer died from his wounds, leaving behind a wife and three children. A lot of emotions get stirred up over an incident like that. But here's the thing. Officer Houston was a man of strong faith, and the evidence of that faith was on full display as his daughter Shelby spoke at his funeral. Listen to what she said, but you might want to pause and get a tissue first. I remember having conversations with my dad about him losing friends and officers in the line of duty. I have heard all the stories you can think of, but I've always had such a hard time with how the suspect is dealt with. Not that I didn't think there should be justice served, but my heart always ached for those who don't know Jesus. Their actions being a reflection of that. I was always told that I would feel differently if it happened to me, but as it's happened to my own father, I think I still feel the same. There has been anger, sadness, grief, and confusion, and part of me wishes I could despise the man who did this to my father, but I can't get any, of, any part of my heart to hate him. All that I can find is myself hoping and praying for this man to truly know Jesus. I thought this might change if the man continued to live, but when I heard the news that he was in stable condition, part of me was relieved. My prayer is that someday down the road, I'd get to spend some time with the man who shot my father. Not to scream at him, not to yell at him, not to scold him, simply to tell him about Jesus. It's kind of hard being shamed by a teenager, but that's kind of how I felt listening to her. Because my first thought in that situation would not be, wow, this man really needs Jesus. But whether or not that's my first thought, it should be where I get to quickly because Christ has forgiven me so much, and it isn't. When I get there, it's grudgingly at best. Several times Jesus commands us to forgive others. In Matthew 6, he says, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. He told the parable of the servant who had this huge debt forgiven and then wouldn't forgive the much smaller debt owed to him. And Jesus said, if we don't forgive those who hurt us, God won't forgive us. I think we kind of file away commands like that as something Jesus was setting a goal for but doesn't really expect because we think we can't really do it. But he does, and we can. This young woman shows us it's possible. A man killed her father, and she wants to be able to share Jesus with him. That kind of attitude only comes when you're walking close to Christ, moment by moment, day by day. It's not easy. It goes against our flawed human nature, but it's doable with God's help. And this season of Lent, as we look to the sacrifice Jesus made and the forgiveness he offers us, we want to have Jesus develop that kind of grace-filled, forgiving heart in us as well. So in our personal prayer times today, let's ask the Lord to work on us, that we would all have hearts of forgiveness like this young lady. And my prayer is also that at some point she gets her wish and gets to share Christ with her father's killer, because God can do amazing things when we forgive.